everybody, it's Zimtex. As always, glad to have you here. In this video, I'm going to be making an alpine newt, which should be pretty interesting. I think it's a pretty cool animal. It's got lots of different colors. But before I get into that, I wanted to thank everybody for all of the positive comments and feedback that I've been getting. I'm really thankful to have such great subscribers and a great audience. You guys are really awesome, and obviously without you, there's not a channel, so thank you for being here. Now let's get straight into the video and make an alpine new. Now that I've got my Alpine Newt sketched out here, I was going to go over some of the features of this design. And first of all, uh, let's talk about what situations I would be using this lure in. Um, I'm anticipating using this type of lure in an Alpine lake, which is very, very calm water, uh, where I would pitch it into an area that I suspected had some trout in it. And I would let it kind of float to the surface a little bit and then I would just give it little twitches so that it, you know, was a little bit more lifelike. I've put a joint here on the tail section. Uh, I'm going to put a lot of joints here in the legs. Um, this is not the kind of lure that I would cast out there and reel it back and cast out there and reel it back. From what I can tell, newts don't seem to do a whole lot of swimming around. So obviously this is kind of a specialty lure. The joint connections I plan on using for this lure are a little bit different than I've done before. Uh, I'm going to use 50 pound fluorocarbon to connect all these pieces together. The reason I chose fluorocarbon is that I've read that it doesn't react to UV rays like monofilament will, and so it should be a lot more stable. It'll also give me the flexibility I'm looking for so that subtle twitches will make those limbs all move. In any case, I'm going to have a single hook point here in the belly right in the midsection and then I'm also going to have my line tie under the chin here at the head. But I definitely want to weight this where it's pretty heavy, but it has a really, really slow float. And I think that'll give it the most realistic presentation. At this point, what we're going to do is we're going to take all these pieces that we saved and we're going to put this together like a puzzle. 
and I'm going to hot glue those back into place temporarily to give me a flat side where I can then cut the side profile. So the legs didn't work out exactly like I thought they would. I was hoping that they'd dangle down a little bit lower, but that's okay. It'll work. Um, I'll just carve them off to the side here. They're all going to get cut off anyway, so uh, we'll just make do with what we've got here. And uh, let's start smoothing this thing out and getting it a little bit more rounded. I'm feeling pretty good about the tail. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that into place with some super thin Instacure. That's what I'm going to use to waterproof the wood and also give it some strength. So I'll just keep doing this section by section until I get the thing completely carved and sealed. I think I'm pretty much done with the carving. I'm going to go ahead and cut the legs and the tail off. This is the thinnest stainless steel wire I've got, 0 0.032 inches. So I'm gonna grab one of these tiny drill bits, whichever one is the closest. Let's do that one, and it is just ever so slightly bigger. While we're here, this is the um, fluorocarbon that I'm gonna be using uh, for the flexibility that I talked about at the beginning. But I'm going to get a piece of that so that I can get some super glue down in that hole. I want to waterproof that really good and I also want to decrease the buoyancy of the arm. So if I can soak that in some Instacure, then that ought to help reduce the buoyancy a little bit. And I'm going to put a drop and let it go down in the hole.
So that hot glue and wire will provide a temporary hold for me um, so that I can ballast this and paint it and then I can still take it apart for final assembly later on. We are ready to add some weight to this thing and uh, I want to add weight so that it sits in the water like this with its head up and the tail down. Um, ordinarily I use lead but for this particular one I'm going to use uh, some of these little steel BBs uh, just to give it a little bit of weight no bigger than this thing is. I thought it would be a lot easier to work with. Uh, first thing I want to do is mark on the tail where I can actually have some weight. Those are 0.177 and I got my wires in there probably to about there so really that's that's the only place I can add weight to this tail uh, without getting into trouble with width. So I'm going to temporarily add these weights to the bottom of this lure with some hot glue and that'll allow me to adjust the location of it, fine tune it. I'm actually gonna start out with just two of these things. I think that might be enough. But we'll, we'll just give it a try here and see. Now I'd prefer to use a single hook, but I don't have any the right size so I'm gonna put a treble on here just for now until I can get the right hooks in but this will help me uh, get a more accurate balance on there yep. yep too much I'm gonna remove this front weight right here maybe it's enough to have just a little bit of weight in the tail and then the hook provide the rest of the weight. So let's let's give that a look. Hopefully that doesn't sink. It's not sitting quite like I want it to though. I think I'm going to put it in just like that because what you have to remember is that I've got some buoyant wood that I'm going to be drilling out to add weight into. And so that will reduce the buoyancy of this tail by a little bit, which may just be enough to tip the scale for me. Uh, the other consideration is once I put clear coats and things like that on this thing, it's going to be a little bit heavier. So what I don't want to do is get it too heavy where it sinks when I'm done. So I'm going to play it safe and just put one weight in the tail here. Um, I'm toying with the idea of scooting this hook back just ever so slightly. 
Um, and it may be enough that what I can do is just take a pair of pliers and bend that loop back a little bit just to get that weight slightly further back. And that may be enough uh, to get this just right. So I think we're in the ballpark, but I'm going to go ahead and embed this uh, BB in there and then we'll reweigh it and see what happens. So I've got that BB embedded and sanded and all that good stuff. And once I paint over it, you won't even see it. But I did go on ahead and bend that eyelet back a little bit so that the hook sits just a tiny bit further back. Also, another adjustment that I can make later on if I need to is I can use a lighter hook and a lighter split ring if I need more buoyancy. I don't know that I'll need more weight, but if I, if I do, I can use a slightly bigger hook uh, and a heavier split ring. Um, that's just a little way to adjust it in the field if I needed to. Boom. That's perfect. We're going to start off with some opaque white as a primer. Okay, this is a custom color I made. It's kind of a light tan color. And I mixed it with... 20 parts opaque white, one part detail raw umber, one part opaque yellow, and seven parts transparent light brown. I'm going to get in there now with a little bit of detail moss green, and this is one of the wicked colors. Next, we're going to use a little bit of this wicked fluorescent sunburst on the belly. Now we're going to go with a little bit of wicked fluorescent blue. And now a little bit of Wicked Laguna Blue. And then our last blue is going to be an iridescent electric blue. And now it's time for some brush work. Um, this ridge along the spine should be that kind of tan color. So I'm just going to brush that back on there pretty thick. Of course, we always seem to roll around to opaque black.
Now all I got to do is separate the legs and the tail, uh, pull the wire out so that I can put my fluorocarbon in. I may have to backpedal on the whole 50 pound fluorocarbon thing. So this side has 50 pound and it's very, very stiff. I've also got some 25 pound fluorocarbon and that moves a lot easier. So I think I'm going to switch all these to the 25 pound because I'm worried that if I stick with the 50 pound i won't get any movement out of this i'm going to use this extra thick glue to glue the line in place and um, at my local hobby store i also got these little micro tips that you can put on there like so and what that should allow me to do is apply that glue directly into the hole I'm just putting a drop of this Insta set on there. It's an accelerator that uh, sets the glue instantly. I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on that just now. The accelerator may have uh, set right at the joint, but I want to give the inside plenty of time to set up really well before I start messing with this too much. So I'm probably going to let this set for a little bit and then I'll put the hook on it and we'll throw it back in the tank and see what it looks like. So when I put this in the water and I was looking at it, um, I wasn't very happy with the movement. As you can see, even though I went to a 25 pound uh, fluorocarbon, it's still pretty stiff. You know, these limbs are very, very, very stiff and I'm not getting a lot of movement out of them in the water. So I've redone these two. I've cut the arm off, re-drilled it, and I've gone back with a 10 pound fluorocarbon. And you can see it's a lot lighter versus that side. Now, whether or not it's gonna be light enough, I'm not positive, but um, I'm leery of going too much lighter um, because then I run the risk of these just breaking and, and losing them. Okay, I've got it all reassembled here. Let's see what we got. You can see that tail's a lot more sensitive. Those move a lot easier. I'm happy with that. And like I said, in the original design, it's mostly just supposed to suspend in the water like that. And maybe I'll give it some little twitches and get a little bit of movement out of the, the legs and the tail, but it's mostly just going to suspend kind of in the water there. So that should work out pretty nice for what I'm wanting it to do. All right, we could take a look at what this looks like in the water. So it sits nicely still. To be perfectly honest, I did a little bit of experimenting with twitching it in the water and I wasn't getting a whole lot of movement out of the arms and legs. So that didn't really work out exactly like I wanted. But at least I still have durability because if I were to carve these arms and legs without a joint there, they'd break off for sure. So I guess in retrospect, I would have left the 25 pound line in there. But I am looking forward to taking this fishing up in the mountains next spring. I get a lot of questions about the products and materials that I use, so I've got those linked in the description below, along with other cool stuff like Zimtex merchandise and things like that. If you like the content I'm putting out, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and give me a thumbs up so I can make more of the stuff you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you on the next one.